Good morning. Welcome everybody to Prosperity today. We're glad y'all are tuning in with us today. Well, just a reminder before we have our preaching service today, we encourage you to send any prayer requests you've got. Just send them in to Ryan, and we'll want to pray for over those here in a little while. But today we're going to jump into our Sunday School lesson this week, and it's, it's entitled Encourage. It says, Encouragement Strengthens Relationships. Says, the question we have is, when have you crossed paths with a natural encourager? Everybody knows that person that's always upbeat, always got something encouraging to say. And that's where we're going to we're going to study about Barnabas today. Barnabas was a natural encourager. His life challenges us to be a source of encouragement to others. We support the other person and strengthen our relationship when we look for ways to offer encouragement. You know, it's always easy to um, to uh, be on the negative side of things, um, especially right now. We're not able to come into church right now. They're encouraging to six, stay six feet apart. And it's easy to to jump on the bandwagon as well. We are to be doing this. We are to be doing that. Which instead of I challenging everybody, instead of uh, looking at all the bad that's going on, to be the encourager for the other people. Um, it's e- it's easy to point out everything that's bad. That's a but the encouraging being an encourager is a little harder. I feel like that's one of the things I kind of struggle with myself. It's not always easy to be that encourager. You look around, you know the. Right now, uh, me and my wife were discussing last night how much better it seems to be while we're able to stay at home with our families, with their, just do things together, where before everybody, well, somebody's running off to go shopping, somebody's stuff to do this. It's, this is not all bad um, with what we've got. So there's encouraging things that we can find in this, and I think that as a Christian, we're point. We're we're not necessarily to look at all the bad that's out there all the time. I think God's calling us to be encouragers for each other. Um, I know, especially during this time, we're not able to be with each other. That um, you know, you'll still there's a telephone. There's different things, but we got to encourage each other. Um, there's enough negative. If you watch the news at all, there's enough discouragement. So let's let's. Be like Barnabas and try to be the the encourager that the each other needs. What the church needs right now. What what everybody around you know. Everybody's got friends that don't go to church. Be the encourager, not the discourager during this time. That's kind of what we're studying about today. And we're going to jump into the scripture. Um, it's coming from Acts chapter nine, and I'm going to verse start with verse twenty six through twenty eight. It says, "And when Saul was come to Jerusalem." He essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out of Jerusalem. It says, Barnabas first popped up in Scripture as Joseph of Cyprus. This was in Acts 4.36. The apostles had given them the nickname Barnabas, which means the son of consolation. Apparently, this man had developed a sterling reputation of being building up others with loving words, generous acts, and even affirming looks. When people in the early church thought of an encourager, they thought of Barnabas, and the nickname stuck. In Acts 9, God uses Barnabas to bring Saul to a place of prominence. In this first, in, in chapter 20, in verse 26, he says that um, Saul, which later would become Paul, um, came to Jerusalem, he wanted to join the disciples, and they didn't want anything to do with him. And if you know any of the background stories, because Saul was one of the main proponents of the Christians during this time. He was he had permission to hunt them down, kill them, bring them to jail, whatever he saw fit. So everybody was scared of him. So you can imagine, uh, you know, when he came, they word didn't travel like it does now. They didn't know... That he that Saul was a born born again believer, so they were afraid of him. Um, they were afraid that maybe this was a. I, I'm of course we don't know for sure, but I imagine that they were they didn't. Of course, it says they didn't believe him, but they kind of thought it was a trick. I'm sure that he was just trying to come in and catch them and and do something. But Paul, we know from the story that Paul's heart was changed on the road to Damascus. That Jesus. Um, came to him and spoke to him and told, asked him why he was persecuting him. 
and Paul's life changed drastically that day. It says that Barnabas realized Paul was a changed man. He saw Saul as a man truly changed by the shed blood of Jesus. Therefore, Barnabas stuck his neck out and vouched for Saul. He encouraged the apostles to re reconsider their skepticism and to take, take a risk on this guy. It says, the disciples may not have trusted Saul, but they did trust Barnabas. So they opened the door in their hearts to Saul, and he soon became a dominant force in spreading the, the gospel. It said, Barnabas, you know, if, if Barnabas Hatton came to the disciples and said, hey, I vouch for this guy, we don't know what the Christ, how the Christian faith would have moved on from that. Barnabas, um, in his heart, I mean, he was, as a natural encourager, I think you look around and um, you just, you very easily see the uh, good side of things, I believe, as a natural encourager. You don't see all the bad. You know, all of us have sinned and we've done things, some's probably worse than others, but a natural encourager looks past all that. He looks at, at he finds the good in you, and that's, that is what um, Barnabas did. He saw the good in Paul, so he vouched for him. He said, hey, I believe this man has truly changed, and I think he could do a great work for us. So the disciples um, accepted him in. I'm sure they were still a little leery of him, but after he started preaching, it says he started preaching boldly in the name of Jesus and said, um, and they allowed him in. I, I imagine that... Um, Paul, um, I can picture him sitting at the feet of the disciples, learning from them, them teaching everything. And, of course, they didn't know it at the time, and probably nobody. Paul probably didn't even know it himself, but he would go on to probably be one of the greatest leaders of the church. Um, he would rise probably even, ab even above some of these other disciples, um, it says, do you think Barnabas had any hint of the magnitude of Saul's um, soon-to-be ministry? Maybe, maybe not, but he knew that God had called this man, so he, he encouraged him to do everything that he could do to, um, to see him succeed in what he was doing. And so, you know, without Paul, you think about um, he was probably our first true missionary, I guess you could say, that went out. Um, you see all his, his letters, most of the, new to, or a lot of the New Testament is written by him. So he went around and his ministry went above and beyond what was going on or with that section of the world at the time. You know, it was, the Christian faith was kind of in just one certain area at the time. So by Paul going out, he became the missionary that went out to spread the gospel. It says, is someone in your life starving for encouragement? Can you think of a person on the fringe that could use an invitation into your church, into your circle of influence? You may never know the difference you make in another's life when you simply extend the hand of fellowship and invite him or her into your world. And that's true. You know, you, there's, there's people out there that um, you normally, I guess the word is you don't associate with, maybe you're not even really acquainted is with us. And I was really bad about that when I was younger. I did not leave my comfort zone at all. But uh, Deanna jokes now, she'll look up and I'll just be off talking to a perfect stranger. It doesn't bother me now. That's just something I, I enjoy doing. It's not that I'm witnessing necessarily. It's just a matter of asking them how they're doing, where they're going, where they're from. And you know, I still don't feel like encouragement is my one of my strengths or really one of my gifts, but it doesn't take much just to talk to somebody. If anybody here in the church, uh, I'm sure he's listening, Dave Butterball brings this to mind constantly. Dave Butterball is one of the biggest encouragers I know. And we all have to um, take, take a little bit of that, get out of our comfort zone, and just encourage somebody. It, doesn't, it could be just anybody, and we'll ha I'll have a list. As we, if I have enough time, we'll get into that. It says, what, here's this question number two. It says, what risk do you take when you endorse an outsider? And the, the, um, when I read that, the um, part of my job at work, that what I do is I, I do interviews and stuff 
when we're trying to hire somebody. And that's and one of the things I thought about when it says when you what kind of risk do you take is I was comparing it to a reference for a job. You know, everybody has references on there. And sometimes, you know, that could you kind of take a risk with that. If you don't know them that well, or even if you know them that well and they don't work out, say if it's your place of employment you're trying to get them a job at and they don't work out, there's always that fear of that'll look bad on you for, for doing that. So that, I mean, does that have anything to do with this lesson? I don't, I don't know, but that was just kind of in my mind what I thought about. So, and that's kind of, you know, Barnabas kind of done the same thing. He didn't know... He, th he knew that Saul um, and Paul, I'm sorry, it's the same person. I'll keep dropping back and forth. But he, he knew that Paul would, um, he knew that he had changed on the road to Damascus. And he knew that he had preached boldly for Jesus. So he, um, he endorsed him, but he really, I, I don't know, maybe in the back of his mind, he might have thought, uh, I hope I'm doing the right thing. And, of course, we know we did, but I'm sure um, knowing how God works, and I'm sure he put it on, on Barnabas' heart, said, hey, I need you to encourage this man. So, and we, of course, we all know the rest of the story. He did come, become one of the great leaders of the church. In Acts 11, 21 through 24, it says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. And you know, you know, when I read that last thing, I thought about... Um, it's kind of, I don't know if it's morbid or not, but I thought about tombstones. If you'll go through the cemetery and, you know, you'll see, I don't know how much they do it now, but I notice anything you see in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, you'll see on that tomb, here was a, the father of such and such, this was a good man or anything. But when they, prefer, when they said Saul was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, I thought, you know, I would love for that to be said about me when I die and they're talking about me that I was full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. You know, he, he, as being an encourager, and he wanted everybody to have the same encouragement he had from Jesus. So he worked hard, and during this time, it was, a lot of times, that was a death sentence if you did this. But he, he firmly believed in what he was doing, and everybody said he was a good man, and the disciples knew it, so they sent him to this area to find out what was going on and see how the church was doing. It says, Barnabas encouraged believers to accept another believer, and he also encouraged believers to grow spiritually. In Acts 11, Barnabas returned to the stage. This time, he was commissioned by the apostles in Jerusalem to travel 300 miles north to Antioch. Many Jews in Antioch embraced Christianity, and the believers had begun to spread the message to the Gentiles as well. As a result, Greeks in the region were coming to faith in Christ. When the apostles got wind of the astonishing harvest, they sent Barnabas to assess the situation and report what God had done. Because of, and if you know, during this time, the, um, I guess they were, everybody was pretty much in this area was over, was run, um, ruled by the Romans, which the Romans didn't want anything to get in the way of their way of life. So their, their thinking was to, Anything that came up different was to destroy it. Kill them out, start killing a few, they'll, they'll get scared and this will die down. And that'll be the end of it. But what they didn't realize, and I think this was from God, the way he had it planned, because of the persecution, believers had scattered so the kingdom of God advanced wherever they went. By just not staying in that one place, if you imagine what had happened if the uh, Christian faith blossomed in Jerusalem, and that's as far as it went. Nowhere, but in God's plan, we can, we can look back, history tells it, that the Romans and the Jewish, the, the Jewish leaders tried to squash the Christiana by persecuting, by killing them. That's what Paul's job was, was to do, was to squash it, to do away with it. But, but what happened was that the believers spread out. They started leaving. So their faith followed them, and that's how the Christian faith started. It, it, 
Well, as we can see now, looking back, it exploded, we could say. It just went everywhere. So um, Barnabas, when he saw what was going on at Antioch, the first thing he did, wait a minute, I may be jumping ahead of myself. Let's see. Let me read my... Yeah, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Um, it says, To be a Christian was to accept the road of suffering, but it was a journey that could make with joy. Barnabas did not did more than pay lip service to the joy of knowing Jesus. He embodied it. His message and his conduct were in sync, for he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. So basically what they're saying is, you know, we can all say that we're Christians. We can claim to be Christians. But, you know, as this says, that's, that can be just lip service. You know, if our Christian faith goes no more than sitting right there on a pew and we come for the service, we listen to our pastor preach the message, and then we get up and we go out and we don't think another thing about it until the next Sunday, all we're doing is lip service. We're, we're claiming to be Christian. And you are. If you've accepted the Lord as your Savior, you are a Christian. But what are you doing with it? You know, are you using what you have for the good of God? You know, it's, it's one thing to, to be a Christian and to go out and, um, you know, live your life during the week, you know, however you want to, gossip, whatever, talk bad about somebody. You can, it can be many, many things. But are you having the joy of Christ What's the joy of being a Christian showing out to everybody during your week away? <clears throat> that can be, you know, it ain't always our words. Our words, as God, as the, it says, the, the tongue is a dangerous weapon, but it also can be a, um, a sword of, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it can also be the building up of the kingdom too. You know, we, with one word, we can bring somebody down, but with that one word, we, one word, we can bring them right back up. So what I'm trying to say is, use what God's gave you to be an encourager to other people, not to be a discourager. You know, if somebody such and such is having marital problems, you know, it's not your job to tell everybody in the community such and such is having marital problems. Your job is to pray for them that they can work their marriage problems out. That's what you need to do instead of telling everybody what's going on. We're going to have to move on. I'm going to run out of time. It says, question number three says, how can we intentionally grow into the role of an encourager? It says, then to act, this is Acts 11, 25 and 26. Then departed Barnabas to Taurus for to seek Saul. And when he found him, he brought him into Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. During this time, Paul had missionary journeys had started, and Paul had become one of the greatest preachers probably in up to this point was had become one of the greatest preachers his when he went out you know he was having numerous numerous people come to come to know Christ, so he became one of the great because he he rose up and the other disciples. I wouldn't say that they started going down, but a lot of them had already started being um, um, martyred, crucified, whatever you want to say. Barnabas knew what his, I think he, he knew what his job was. His job was to encourage the new believer. I don't, we don't see it, we're kind of reading into it, but Barnabas knew what Paul was good at. And Paul was good at bringing believers to Christ. So I, Barnabas departed Tars. He saw that the good was good, and he said, hey, this field is ripe. Let me go get the man that's best for the job. Barnabas was willing to, by being the natural encourager he was, the man full of the Holy Spirit, he knew what his strengths were, and he knew that, I feel like, he knew that this wasn't something he could handle on his own. So he went and got Paul, Saul, and brought him to him and said, hey, Let's get to work. And they, it says they, they stayed for a whole year and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. This is pro I feel like this is probably where the Christian church really started blowing out. 
Barnabas and Saul said, hey, this is where it's at. Let's, um, we said it's that um, Barnabas, we don't know what Barnabas said to Saul when he went and got him, but he said he brought Saul to Antioch to serve, to do what God had gifted him to do, and that was to preach. And it says, um, here are a few questions, it's like, or a few things, statements, for offering encouragement to other people. It says, wow, you're really gifted with kids. You know, and I'm thinking this could be in stuff in church. It can be for anything, really. You made my week with that beautiful song. How did you learn to teach the Bible so well? Um, my college student can't wait to walk in and talk to you each week. It says, have you ever thought about leading a small group of your own? You make delicious desserts. If you charged, I would pay. Your home feels so warm when we arrive each week. Thanks for preparing the space and making us feel welcome. You know, all of that is different things if you put in perspective with the church. All of these things are something you could, just a statement you could make to somebody trying to do a job. You know, everybody needs encouragement. I don't care who you are. Sometimes, like for me, um, you people brag on me for doing this. Now, this is not the most comfortable thing I, I do. And it's kind of embarrassing. I'll be honest with you. It's kind of embarrassing. You do not want to take credit for it. This is not because, believe me, if I was doing this on my own, this would be a mess. I'll just tell you, it may be a mess anyway. I'm not, I'm not one to go back and listen to myself. But I'm trying to do what God leads me to do. So I don't want to take any credit for it because it's all Him. It's not, nothing with me. So you've got to be careful with the, when you receive encouragement also. Don't let it go to your head. Um, if somebody says, you, boy, you're a great teacher, you're not doing that on your own. So it's, don't take the credit for it ever. Because just maybe the encouragement is great. Trust me, it feels good. But also, you've got to keep it into perspective that what you're doing is from God. It's not me up here. Because like I said, if I was doing it on my own, this would not sound anything close to what I feel like I hear in my ear when I'm saying it. But God takes every, anything we do, anything, any of these encouragements that you can offer should come from the Lord. You know, encourage these people, but be also, why, in your return, while you're receiving this encouragement, just remember that God's given you the gift. Of it. For the singing, we've got some great singers here, and I don't think, I know everybody here that gets up and sings, and none of them would take credit for it, because it's from God. That's, that is his, um, that's the gift he's given them. It says, um... It says, at one time, Barnum said, serves as a mentor to Saul, watering him with encouragement and watching him grow up in faith. Now Saul had developed to the point of being Barnabas here in the ministry. So Barnabas realized, you know, by calling Saul, Barnabas had encouraged him, watched him grow, I'm sure gave him encouraging words through his time. But at the same time, Barnabas realized that Paul had raised above him, and it was time for Barnabas to take a step back. So... As somebody, that's, that's something here, you know, if you've got the right person doing the right job, you kind of set back, you know, the, for the, you know the, the teacher becomes the student. That is what Barnabas did. Um, sometimes you just, you see somebody doing something that you know they could do a whole lot better job than you are doing, or maybe God's telling you that somebody, you know, sometimes it's best just to step back and let them do that job and be the encourager behind the scenes. Um, some people can do that real well, and I know others it's, it's kind of painful to step back, but sometimes you just got to step back and, um, and let God do the work, and you just do what He leads you to do. It says that Barnabas did not just use words to encourage Saul's ministry and teaching. He also encouraged through his actions he served alongside Saul. Our own actions and examples can be great encouragements for others to step up and use the gifts God and skills God has given them. And what I think, what I take from that, um, from our, for us today is, um, you know, we kind of step back and let others do it. You know, we've got younger people coming up in our church that we've seen some already take positions of leadership and things. And we've got to be the encourager behind that. And we should be that way with our pastor too. You know, God's called a brother David to be, the servant, the pastor, the lead, the, the shepherd of our flock, you know, is the way the Bible terms that. 
So it's our job, you know, we may not like everything Brother David does. Not everybody's going to like everything about it. But we should constantly encourage him, our Scunzi school workers, whoever, whoever it is, we could constantly encourage them to do the jobs God's called them to do. It's easy to criticize, hey, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. But that's, that's in my mind, that's the way I look at it. That's kind of petty stuff. Let's be the encourager because all of us should be in the one accord to spread the gospel of Jesus. And by doing that, we can't have some doing it their way, some doing it their, their, another way. We should all be doing this together in one accord, supporting each other and encouraging. I thank you all for listening today. We'll be back in a few minutes with our, our worship service for the day.